<laughs> Let me get my clock started so I know where I am. On All right. Clock. You rolling? rolling? All right, here we go. Three, two, one. So, uh, number three, it's not bad, Haley. Not bad. Not bad at all. Although, um, everybody wants to be number one, and the pressure that, that you guys have is, is <laughs> the, the pressure that you guys have is, uh, I don't think you can, I don't think people understand how much pressure there is. I don't think they do either. Um, it's funny because um, the life of an idol, it can, it's, there's a lot of work that goes into this. And I mean, it's not, the least that we probably do is the rehearsal time for what we're actually on the show to do. You know, there's, there's so many other things incorporated. Um, so it's quite funny. Um, but, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's all the number one spot, but I'm, I'm happy where I've gotten. I, I would think so. So now the question, obviously the, the question is, what do you want to do from here? Well, um, hopefully, you know, sing a couple more tunes. Um, <laughs> no, I'd like to, you know, have this go on for as long as I possibly can. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, Idol, you know, we all have been on it, but and it has been the greatest platform that's, you know, been blessed in our lives, but now it's all about afterwards, and the reason I came into this in the first place was to get ahead and, you know, have some of this recognition going on to further my career. Yeah, because there's a, there's a million billion singers out there that are all trying to get noticed. Right. There's no better way to get noticed than that stage. Right, because I, I was just telling somebody earlier that it's not like there's a bunch of agents and clubs anymore going, you know, oh, yeah. uh, this, this is it. You know, it's not, it's different Oh, the times. music industry is a tough, tougher yeah. business than it's ever been. Yeah, and, I, you know, and a lot of people might think that Idol is easy route to this um, sure it's it's a it's an outlet that, that um, is in reach but it is it is hard it's right. a lot of work let's talk about how you got here because your parents uh, both musicians so you grew up in a home of music yes your wiki me. says that you started singing when you were mm -hmm. eight you um, and now I get where you you uh, sang cover songs from the 60s and 70s with your parents right right so you that's where you know, forgive me, but your parents are my generation, totally. and 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 uh, your Joplin is. I mean, I've been looking for Janis Joplin ever since she died. Oh man! And you did it like nobody. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, my mom rips it, rips it apart. She's she's great, and I mean, I have them to thank. I've I've grown up with just a million, you know, genres going on, and classic rock has been, you know, just something that I hold close to me. And um, I mean, I've been singing for forever, but on stage, yes, since I was eight with my folks, and um, it's just. It's been a blessing getting to hear all this, uh, the great, the musicality, you know. All right, so you graduated from high school a year, almost two years ago. Uh, two years ago. Like, and, and then yeah, you went to three. college and you studied jazz. Yeah. Why jazz? Um, it's funny. I, I mean, I grew up around it, too. My dad, he plays, like, everything. So jazz is huge for him. He, um, and I, at the moment, just growing up with it, I, I don't think I liked it too much. Once I got into high school and I tried out for a vocal jazz ensemble, and um, we were going around and scatting and stuff and it was my turn and I'm freaking out about it but it just kind of poured out of me and it was just one of those moments where everybody's just like what and I, I don't know it was just kind of subconsciously embedded in my brain I guess and I literally from that day on just had this so, newfound love for it so you and Casey Abrams are going to run off together and do a jazz combo huh? right you know <laughs> on our white horsebacks and all um, <laughs> I love that I was showing you your Wikipedia you hadn't seen it and it was of course of talking about Reinhardt's close relationship with Abrams led to rumors of them dating right well at least they didn't say that's better than dating? I thought dating how did you date you couldn't date right I can't even breathe yeah let alone date. <laughs> um, but no, it uh, obviously, you know, we have this very close bond. Was it the jazz? Because, I mean, he's great at jazz. Yes. And I mean, and I bless his heart, he got to do a lot of that on the show, or at least show it more than I could have. Um, and that's why when we did Monin, I mean, that was that was very, you know, spontaneous. And I and I picked up on it. Our keyboardist just started playing it. And we were going to do Fever instead because I requested that. But um, we just picked up with Monin. And I'm so glad we went with it because I got to finally show another passion, like my one of my biggest passions. Well, you're, you, um, one of the things about you, that you know, we're all great critics of others anyway. So we all got to sit and watch you and then critique you every week. Yay. And the thing about it was you would knock it out of the park and then the next week, you won. And I think it was just song selection. That song selection thing is so difficult. 
Yeah, I mean, you never, you got to go with it. You know, people don't understand sometimes, you know, everybody's like, don't sell out, whatever. It's a theme show, you know, and you have to go with it. And you bear, you have no time to even pick, really, really sit down. It's not like you got a week or even, you know, just a little time to think about the song um, choice in itself. And, um, so, yeah, it's a very difficult process. It is. The um, Animals, House of the Rising Sun. I mean, you talk about going back to classic rock. Yeah. Oh, mother. <laughs> Well, tell your children not to do what I have done. Well, spend your lives in sin and misery in the house of the rising sun. Is there a little uh, a jazzy uh, twist to the old classic? <laughs> you know, I loved it. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But it goes back to that era that you. I think a lot of people that are your generation are singing songs that they didn't even. That, that they kind of blow them because they've never heard them before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that that was what was so fun for me playing with all these themes because uh, I've grown up with everything in my system. So that was fun. It's like playing dress up, you know. Uh, um, so I had a blast with, especially the classics. Well, y'all. Yeah, then you brought it a little more current. With um, Alanis Morris, that you ought to know. And every time you speak her name, does she know how you told me you hold me till you die, till you die? Well, you're still alive, and I'm here to remind you of the mess you left when you went away. It's not fair to deny. Tough song to sing. Very tough song to sing. Very tough. Uh huh. I never listened to it back either. What do you think? It's all right, I guess. You know, it's <laughs> weird hearing myself back. It got, it, got, it got you past that week, so I, it worked. <laughs> I, uh, the other thing about your wiki is you were the only contestant from the season ten that had over a million views on two of your YouTube performances for Rolling in the Deep and uh, Benny and the Jets. That is really cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, more than a million people. You're also the only one to have received three standing ovations from the judges three weeks in a row. Man, that's also very cool. I mean, th those weeks were the ones where, you know, I got harsh critiques and, and then I got maybe a standing O. I didn't even, like, realize, to be honest. You know, all this is happening and I'm just like, it's a, it's a fog after and that. You did, and you did. You got, you got praise and you got harsh critique. Yes. How you how how was that? You're standing there in front of 30 million people. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, blasting away at you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they look at me and they they see somebody who's not going to crack that easy. And whether they were trying to make me crack or just trying to make me stronger and have a lot of fire, which I, I'm going to go with, you know, plan or option B. I think they were really just trying to get as much as they could out of me at that point. So uh, you know, let's go. All right. So what are you going to do? You, you, you want to keep singing. Um, yes. How does that work with your deal with American Idol? Do you have to, can you go get your own deal? Can you have to work with them? Do um, you, you have plans? Do you want to record something this summer? You're going on tour. You're going to be busy doing yes, that? Yes, tour is going to be awesome. Um, but it, everything's pending right now. And um, coming up, I, I should be finding out if I get signed um, pretty quickly. And, uh, and and if not, you know, with Interscope, then, you know, there's plenty of other opportunities out there in the world. And I'm, I'm very excited for whatever, you know, comes comes my way. I think you should be. Haley Reinhardt, yes. congratulations. Thank you nice so much. Nice to meet you. You as well.